This is the Muckrakers on today's News Talk TNT. Well, a very warm welcome back to this very special edition, the 65th edition of the Muckrakers with me, Andrew Eborn, Dr. George Samueli, and the wonderful Martin J. Um, and we're looking at the Nord Stream gas pipeline, and Zelensky has continued, and his team continued to insist uh, that it was the Russians who did it. Uh, what's your take on that, Martin? I just can't, I can't understand how anybody with any intelligence, you know, um, higher than room temperature would, could see Russia being the beneficiary of such a stunt. Um, it doesn't make sense financially. It doesn't make sense geopolitically. Um, it doesn't really make sense on any level. And uh, I think uh, when we talk about this this pipeline, you know, it's it's easy to kind of move on and talk about um, freedom of speech because, you know, really this whole pipeline story is, it's really about fake news. And there's been an awful lot of fake news which comes from the Ukraine, indirectly and indirectly from the Ukrainians' own US-built dif- disinformation propaganda unit. Um, and I can I can see it, I can spot it, I can taste it a mile off, you know. And the problem we've got in, in, in Britain and America is that the percentage of journalists who are more than willing to write up uh, stories which correspond with the narrative is is now almost 100%. I mean, it's, it's 99, 98%. Hardly any journalists out there that are even prepared to take a step back and look at really these stories from an objective perspective and look at, look at all the usual suspects and ask all the normal difficult questions. We've moved on. We don't have that period in journalism anymore where journalists want to do their job. You know, we've, they've become establishment from being anti-establishment 30 years ago. And this story is very much about this. You know, this this latest offering from Zelensky is preposterous as it is ill-timed, you know, and as like so much news which is coming from Ukraine at the moment, I've been watching in the last few days the Kursk incursion and uh, I've been fascinated by the quality, the poor quality of the reporting on by Western media, how fundamental, I mean, truly gargantian, fundamental pieces of information are missing from the Kursk story, which, you know, the worst, most inept journalist in the world would know. I actually wrote an article a while ago, people can Google it if you want, which argued that war journalism was actually the, the, the easiest and sloppiest and lowest hanging fruit of all kinds of journalism you can imagine, because as, as war journalists, you know, you really don't have to do your job at all. The job comes to you. You know, the bodies fall in front of you. You know, the rivers of blood, the explosions, the bombs going off, the bullets flying. You don't really have to even leave your hotel. It's all there. You know, it's pretty hard to ignore it. And uh, it's amazing how, um, as war correspondents, um, we are not um, we are not tested. We're not pushed further and further to 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 go beyond what is really the, the easiest form of journalism, I argue, in one of my articles. And this is a good example about this. You know, how do you omit from reporting on Kursk the number of casualties on the Ukrainian side? This is something which is completely omitted. We have no idea. We have claims on the Russian side that it's something uh, like a, a couple of thousand men which have been killed on the battlefield. But that's not being reported by, by Western journalists at all. Um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, the Ukrainians have made it very clear to the few lucky ones that got the passes, that got onto the tanks and went with them, that that was something that wouldn't be reported on. And so um, what is the cursed story? Is it real? Is it fake news? You know, um, it would be nice to have some analysis on the Russian side. There's a few theories being thrown around, where, which by one of the main ones is, is that the the military uh, hierarchy in Russia are a bit um, disappointed with Putin and let the Kursk um, uh, invasion happened so that it would push him further to think more about escalating the stakes himself and hitting the West even harder. Another theory is that it was deliberately allowed to happen because a lot of the the, the, the frontline troops, the hardened troops that were sent there on the Ukrainian side um, came from, um, from the Donbass. And now the idea is, can we allow the Ukrainians to come in this enclave, close it off, encircle it, and then maybe take all the Donbass, first of all, and then secondly, perhaps go back for the Ukrainians in that cursed region and finish them off. These are all ideas. 
you know, that have been that you can find, which have been floated by various geopolitical analysts, but they're not being reported on. We're not getting the truth. We're not getting even something even close to the truth um, in Kursk. So I wonder if going back to your story about the pipeline story um, and the Russians blowing it up, you know, it's it's frankly embarrassing to be a Western journalist and to read that line being pushed so fervently by um, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, you know, and uh, even the Guardian, um, which just completely ignores the Seymour Hersh investigation. It's almost as though it doesn't exist. You know, I mean, a guy who's an award-winning journalist who has excellent sources and, you know, is always dismissed by now mainstream media because he uses these anonymous sources. Well, anybody who's my age who's covered anything will tell you that really good journalism usually comes from anonymous sources. You have to protect those people. You know, they've got livelihoods, they've got jobs, they've got kids in school, and they've got a whole career in front of them and a pension, and you're not going to get that really salacious material from people lower down in the ranks. The leaked documents, which is what Hirsch got, which got all the detail, came from somebody very high up, but he gets hit by that. You know, that's the thing that people use as a, as a weapon to, to, to put him down. Um, but for me, the story really is, is a story about fake news. Okay. George? Right. No, I, th I think that uh, this uh, story of the, uh, the pipelines is obviously uh, fake news. I, I wouldn't put the Kursk um, operation in that um, category because I think this is still the fog of war. It's not at all clear what's going on here, what the um, underlying uh, strategy is, um, and it's basically still there. And I think it is a big deal that uh, Russia has been invaded. I mean, Russia, this is something ha that hasn't happened since World War II. The Ukrainians have invaded it. It's now day 11. They haven't been pushed out. And um, we now clear, it's clear that the Americans, NATO, was behind this and they're very happy with it and they basically and this is where it gets very worrying they don't think russia is at all frightening they're not frightened of russia that's yeah. a, you know that yeah. may well be a very naive very foolish uh thought very dangerous thought but nonetheless that's where they are they say we can do this i mean it would be un unthinkable um two years ago that the West would sponsor an invasion of uh, Russian territory using American and Western weapons. And now there's the uh, story today that, they, uh, that the Americans and the Biden administration is going to be sending long-range missiles to, um, uh, to Ukraine to be used on the F-16. So the F-16s are now going to be operational, and they're going to be using long-range missiles. So that, in other words, the Americans have now said, yeah, fine, Deep strikes into Russian territory. We're okay with that. So that's a, that's a that's a big deal. I think that's a that's a very serious uh, development. Um, and I think it's uh, it's worth saying. Well, look, I don't. We we just don't know what this means. But I think it's uh, it's it's quite ominous. What we had expected to happen, which is that Russia would just simply sweep them aside, because we'd all been led to believe that Russia is this he has a huge uh, military. Um, in the in in its uh, reserves, and therefore they can just simply undertake this operation as well as the Donbass operation. Well, that hasn't happened yet. May, but it, it may happen, but it hasn't happened yet. And the Ukrainians are digging in, and we would we wouldn't have expected that. But going back to the Nord Stream, that is definitely fake news. That is definitely an operation to tell the Germans that hey, um, this was these Ukrainians who did it. It wasn't us. The Americans, because this is something that the Germans, this is a little bit of a, a, an awkward issue for them, that this is what the Americans are prepared to do to them. You know, this is the United States. They are prepared to sabotage the German economy. They are prepared to humiliate you. They, they are just to knock you out as any kind of an economic competitor. They're supposed to be your friends. So that's why I think they have to, they have to get this story out to um uh you know get get the uh the germans on board but what is interesting i mean uh, uh, leaving aside all the sort of ludicrous aspects of it is that no one's under arrest no one has been arrested <laughs> um you know the, the the germans issued a uh an arrest warrant for some ukrainian uh vladimir z not, not no no relation um i think in june um he was apparently in poland 
Um, the Poles obviously got wind of this uh, arrest warrant, if, if that's true. I mean, we, we don't know if that's true, but like, that's the story. The Poles got wind of this arrest warrant, pushed him out of the country so that he went to Ukraine. And uh, and then uh, the Poland said, sorry, he's not here. I mean, wish we could help you, but he's now in uh, Ukraine. And then Ukraine, of course, has no extradition treaty. So Ukraine isn't obviously going to hand anyone over. And uh, and then the the media, the, the Wall Street Journal, helpfully writes, "Oh, um, Zaluzhny is now the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK. So unfortunately, diplomatic immunity uh, precludes issuing an arrest warrant." What what utter nonsense! I mean, no, nobody has ever recognized that diplomatic immunity protects you from uh, from actual crimes. I mean, if that were the case. What the hell is, is, did it mean to issue arrest warrants against uh, Putin, arrest warrants against Gaddafi, you know, going yeah. after Assad? You know, well, you mean th an ambassador, he enjoys immunity, but heads of state, they don't enjoy immunity. I mean, of course, it's uh, not nonsensical, but they're getting it all their ducks in a row to make sure that nobody is arrested, because if they were arrested, you know, they might have an embarrassing story to tell. Or probably they'll say, yeah, hey, I, I had nothing, whatever to do with this. So it's it's a ludicrous story, um, but you know, it, it serves its purpose just to keep the uh, the Germans calm. You know, okay, you know, th things are okay. It's, it's, it's this terrible Ukrainians, you can't rely on them. Uh, I, I, quite, quite extraordinary. I, and just, just finally then, I mean, how much do you think the uh, that this has actually damaged the economies uh, in, in Europe, uh, Martin? Well, more than they already are, you know. I, I think the the the, the pipeline story the, of the Nordic is it's it's had to basically force Germany to rebuild its its energy infrastructure. Um, and as I said, uh, you know, LPG on the open market now has it's. I mean, the, my, I can only use as a reference my mother's own heating belt. You know, she's paying almost three right. times a, a, year, a year every every winter to heat her own home. So it has. The, the whole Ukrainian war has had a massive effect, a massive impact on European economies. You know, we we talked earlier about miscalculation, and uh, you know, and that's really the risk now in in Kursk with the Americans and and George rightly pointing out that the Americans are just completely okay with using long range weapons now. Um, they don't seem to appreciate or understand or fear um, Putin's patience snapping. I think miscalculation. Um, was also something quite prominent in the whole financial and investment and business equation for not just, not just energy markets, but all markets. You know, I mean, we in Britain are paid a very, very high price for getting involved in this war, you know, on, on a whole number of levels, not only energy. And uh, it may well take a while before it can all be flushed out of the system and we can get back to normal. Um, but, uh, you know, where will Ukraine be in a number of years down the road, you know, uh, Will it just continue to drain uh, European coffers? It may well be. There may be a new generation. Some people are talking about a 10-year war. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, and when you look at what's happened and the supply, which we, we analysed uh, yesterday on the muckrakers about the, the new supply of weapons, some of which are not going to be delivered for several years. You've got to ask your question about that. Um, well, as always, Martin George, been an absolute pleasure. This was our 65th edition of the muckrakers. Uh, and I want to extend our deepest gratitude to Mike, Jenny, Vicky, Murray, Steve, Jeremy, Charlotte, Tom, my fellow muckrakers and all the brilliant guests. And most of all, to you, the viewers and listeners, uh, your commitment to seeking the the truth with us episode after episode fuels our passion and drives our mission forward uh, it's been an honor uh, to delve into the most pressing controversial issues of our time alongside such a dedicated audience here on the muck race we pledge to continue shining a light on the stories that matter cutting through the noise to provide clarity insight and understanding our goal is not just to inform but to educate and entertain with dignity uh, thank you for joining us on this journey uh, please stay with us uh, next time stay curious stay informed and stay with us as we continue to tackle the issues that matter most uh, but most of all thank you very much and we'll see you next time cheers
replay of this hour, go to episodes at tntradio.live. 